Hey everyone, so we've been working through a couple of projects. Just to recap, we've done a whole cut down on pearl drums from big square ones down to shallow toms, get them back to a traditional size and back out and working hard. The other little project that we did was actually a, a 14 inch tom tom that we wanted to actually put legs on. This video that you're about to watch is actually how to put um, floor tom legs on a tom of your choice. Uh, the principles are the same. It doesn't really matter what drum you've got. You can do this and set this up with what you've got at home. They're all just reaching for a piece of you. Now, I just want to touch base on this one again. This one we were looking at putting some um, mounting blocks on, these ones, on here. Now, a lot of people these days have a cardboard or a piece of paper cut out from different drum companies, drum foundation or foundry or whatever they're called, where you have a map of thirds, quarters and all the geometry that's required to put stuff on. I get that at home you probably don't have any of those things and if you do, great, use it. If you don't, get a piece of whatever. This is plastic edge tape. You can use paper, cardboard, anything you like. I'm just gonna move this around here. If you can see there, roughly so it's kind of in alignment like that. Just get rid of that bit. All right, so I just wanna sort of get a bit of an idea of a mark on that. I'm gonna use my blade, I don't know why because my pencil's not there. <laughs> um, I'm pulling this as tight as I can to get rid of any slack. I'm just gonna put a, a light line up there, the same angle as that one. I can see what that is here. Grab these cutters. Yeah. I'm just gonna trim whoop, like that. You'll need some electrical tape like this. Now all I'm actually doing is measuring the circumference of a drum. As you can see, if I pull that tight, that will actually join. All right, top edge, lead edge. Now, I've got a pen here somewhere. I'm just gonna mark the top edge. Now, for those who aren't very good at maths, this part's pretty simple, really. We're putting three four floor tom legs on this. So, we need to know how big is this? Running out of bench space. Is that gonna stay? Precariously, that I'm happy, that, happy with that. All right, so all I wanna do is measure that and go, how long is that? So, grab a tape measure. Here's one. Put that on the end. Make sure it is on the end. Measure on out, ah, like so. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, stay there. Um, I'd normally stick it down. I'm measuring out. That is 1112. 1112. Just checking that I've got the tape properly on there and on the right side. So it's 1112. I'd use my phone, but you're looking at it right now. So we're just gonna grab this and this. And we're gonna go one, 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 two, divided by three legs. Okay, so three into 12. We already know what that is. Um, three is seven. Okay, so 370 is the spacings. Now I want to actually put the spacings on here so that I can adjust them around the drum to avoid things. We're looking for a thirds because thirds is stable, right? If you break from that, it won't be. So we're just going to put that there. Can't remember what it was now. It's been so long. 370. It's actually 370 a little bit. But this is pretty good. Okay, 370 to here. And then if we go 370 by two, seven seven's 14, carry the one, three, three, six, one, seven, um, seven, four, oh. That'll give us the second one. Check that there. Seven, four, oh. It's number two, number one.
Okay, so to check that we've got that right, I should be able to go 370 on this end. 370. Ta-da! I should be able to measure on this end. 370. This is on the inside here. Ta-da! So, one, two, three. And of course, when that joins, it makes one again. So now we grab that. Again, we need to make sure we're working on the side that we actually want to fit these things on, which isn't that side. <laughs> it's this side here. Now, keep in mind, and some of you are probably going, there's crap on the bench, you're gonna wreck the bearing edges. Um, I'm a professional. No, yes, that is true. You will actually wreck it um, if you um, put crap on the bench and, s and smooth this around. What I'm actually doing is placing. You'll notice when I put something down, I place and then I slide, I don't bang it, just so you know. Now, I've got a vent hole on this side of the drum, here, so I do need to be mindful when I mount my block, that's the bottom, like so, that I'm not gonna foul anything, so I'm thinking there's pretty good, but I wanna check, am I gonna be hitting anything? So let's have a look around here, so yeah, this one's pretty tight here, and this one's pretty tight to that. That's not ideal. Um, so to be able to manipulate it, I use this electrical tape, and I just stretch out a piece on here. The reason I'm using the electrical tape is it just stretches so well. Just pull it tight, stick it back down. It enables you to It enables you to move this while it's fully under tension, which is what we're after. We're gonna set that up to that. How we do that? We get a square. And a square looks like a square, which I can't find. But anyway, this is a square. I don't know if I'll be able to get an edge on there. Nope, it's not gonna work. Find another one. one everybody stop looking okay so remember that's our joining point of this one I've got this hard on the shell and we're gonna move that so that it's sitting in the center of that that air vent there like that okay that's pretty center I'm gonna have to have to move it around my side because I can't really see over looking over that way I'm gonna tape it so that it's in place, I'm just going to check it. Incidentally, it does have to move a little bit, so good thing I checked. So only a little bit. Here's our mark. That's the center hole there. This is square on the top, so down to here. That gives us our center position. But we actually just want to look over here at these ones. What's going to happen here? Let me get this back up. So if we're mounting some legs, remember these have a downside and a top side. So for example, if that's the bottom and this is the top, and all of a sudden I'm going to mount that there, see what's going to happen? It's not going to work. It's going to whack into something. So ideally, then we'd either have to flip this up or relocate it. So I'm just going to first check they don't come in a set. Sometimes these things are made left and right. I doubt it, but I do want to check. So easiest way to check is just put them all facing you. And you can see they don't come in a set, they're all exactly the same. So we've got to adjust this so that it looks good. I'm going to have a look on my side. Evidently, obviously this side here is fine. You've got a couple of options. You could move them up here, but that looks stupid. So I don't want to do that. So what I might do is move it over this way just a little. Again, here I'd move this over a bit so I can get in there. As long as I can tighten it effectively, um, or we could adjust our center position and go slightly off center. 14 inch floor tom, as I'm playing, that would be the badge there. 
Here's my kit, bass drum, doom, 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 doom. I want my badge out. So leg position really does need to be here anyway. So I am gonna put it here, but I'm gonna adjust the distance back. Now it's not exactly thirds, of course, but I want these because they're the front sections to be even. Um, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Keep your eye on that spot there. We're gonna put some vertical tape on here. Just gonna knock these little screws off for a second. Just so I can get it as close as possible so that it's comfortable. I'm not worried about this um, distance yet. I just wanna see, you know, what's comfortable. If I'm a drummer and I'm trying to, you know, reach down and tighten this up, where is it? Okay, now that's fairly comfortable for me. I like this kind of position, though I'm gonna lift it up halfway. That gives me a little bit more distance, a little bit more clearance here. I like this position. I also like this position here, which is basically, center of that lug, that point there. Um, any higher, and to me it's gonna look a bit funny. I would, I would check a pearl kit, but it's, my kits are over there and there are a lot, a lot of uh, stuff in front of them that I don't particularly wanna get out to check. Um, ultimately, we've changed a few things on this kit. I'm pretty happy with how this is gonna be anyway. So, let's get a position. Easy way to make sure this is exactly right is I'm actually gonna measure the distance from the center of a lug, this, this screw, to the lead edge. And that is 82. To be a bit more precise and not use a felt, <laughs> I'll go back to a pen, adjustable square. That's why it's called adjustable, because I can adjust it. I'll put that there. When you're doing multiples, always use adjustable. Now this position is just telling me where that screw is, nothing else. So I'm actually just gonna lightly mark that there. Why did I mark it? Because to find out the middle of this, I need to know where the middle is. What is the distance of these two? When you're checking these, a lot of people will put something on the middle of that one and then look over to this side, over here, and guess this edge. Easiest way to find the middle is to actually put it against that edge and measure to the other edge. So this one is actually 48. Again, if I put it in the center, it comes up at 48. All right, just a, an, easy, an easy step. So we're looking at 48, that's 20 for either side, so 48. On my set square, a little hard for you to see, but see if this helps you. On my set square, we're looking at 48, which is 24. I undo that and I'm gonna push this until 24 lines up roughly there. I'll check that it is. <laughs> so, it's pretty close. All right, so that's 24. Back to here, and that is actually the hole for this one there that is going to go on here like that. So, I'll put it there for you so you can see. That's where that hole will be. I'll mark the second hole out and we'll flood those through. I've also got the distance away that I've adjusted. So that is where we were. If I look at this lug point here and I measure from there to there, it's about 18 millimeters. And I'm actually looking at, so I'm measuring from the same spot. I'm looking at converting that to about 40 millimeters from that point, which is 22 mil over. Um, I am going to check once again that that's what I want. Yes, that's what I want. So I'm measuring on here 40 millimeters from this edge to this mark, and I'm just going to do a mark on there and a mark on here. That way I've got it. Using your square, using your square on the bottom, bring it along to meet that mark there then intersect that hole. We've still got one hole to put in down here, but that gives you that distance there. Okay, and remember that was 40 from here to that edge. So we're going to flip to that side. More important things. Remember, I've already got something I have to fish out down there. It's gonna be a great day. Okay, we're just gonna jump this one back 40. Same thing. 
Get a mark, bit of tape. Incidentally, Ludwig used to actually have the front two closer together than the other one, so that when it sat, it was a bit more like an, an unequal triangle. Actually worked pretty good, I thought. Here we go, lining, lining up again on our mark. Just draw a line all the way through. Now, while we're doing this, let's jump around to here, which is our starting point. That's our join line there. Same again, bring that over to our mark. A little bit wobbly with my pencil there, <laughs> but that is pretty good. So we've got a couple of marks left to put up, which is this one here, which is our first screw. Yeah, that one's already got one. This one here, first screw. Now, if you remember, I said it was 48, maybe. Yes, I did say 48. So to measure back, I just measure 48. Now you can see that on your side, I've got opposite, I've got different ones on my side. Four, eight, which should be there. I'll check. 48. We're then gonna measure just down here with our set square, adjustable square. Get that on the money, which is right on. Lock it up, double check. Yep, that's all good. And we are just going to, I actually can't see what I'm doing here. I'm sure you'll tell me if I'm wrong, but that's Hollywood. Okay, there we go. Again, just to check, I wanna make sure this is gonna line up and that's good. I'm happy with the distance and clearance. Uh, incidentally, there is also something to keep in mind with floor tom legs. There is sometimes an up and a down, as we've got here. That's the down, that is the up. But the reason there's an up and a down is because the hole on this side and the one on this side are in two different distances out from the shell. Why do you say? It's so that when you actually put a leg in, the leg comes out like this and it's to clear the hoop. If they're actually too close, they'll actually vibrate and buzz. So there are some manufacturers over time who have actually adjusted the, the bottom hole or the top hole, this one down here, and the bottom hole so that they're a different angle, so that the legs come in and out on an angle to clear that, but also it, it actually looks pretty cool. A bit more stability as well. Okay, we're pretty good. Let me do a quick idiot check because I was working backwards just to make sure everything is good. Um, I advise doing lots of idiot checks because the world has lots of vid village idiots. No, that is not true. It's just because when you're doing this kind of stuff, man, things happen. Always distracted and put something down and follow the wrong mark. The light's in a different place. Um, you're filming and, you know, working in reverse, whatever it is. All right, now I've got to find something that is not where it's supposed to be. I've got another one instead. What's this? This is a 12 millimeter bullet. No, <laughs> it's not. But all my American friends have just liked and subscribed. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a center punch. How does this work? It works very coolly, if that can be a word. Have a look here on this piece of metal. So it's basically like a punch, as in hole punch, carpenter, except inside is a little spring assembly. Now when I put that there, it puts pressure and you'll see that this sinks in and then all of a sudden it fires back down. But you watch underneath it what happens, ready? Here it go, click. Now when I remove this, if you look really close, you'll see it's left a dint, left a mark. And that's a center point. So what that means is I can move along and it will actually locate on that center point whenever I want it to. So when I go to drill, my center point's there. So I push, let's put one here, and there's my center point. 
So just a very cheap little tool. Uh, let's have a look what's inside it. Okay, there's that bit, that bit, and another spring up the other end here. Okay, so there's a little bar inside there, and by, oh, by the looks of that, there'll be a receiving channel. Oh yeah, here we go, receiving channel. So that obviously goes into there. At some point, it, with pressure, it fires, and then that spring then fires back. So, yeah, pretty cool. So we're going to use the center point just to mark the centers, which is why it's called a center point. <laughs> Actually, it's probably called something else. I don't even know what it's called. I've just been using them for forever. Um, okay, hopefully you can see that. Hopefully I got it at the right spot. So just line him up, push, bang. Line it up, push, bang. Just excuse me while I do these ones. It's really tricky doing it the other way. I just can't see with the lack of lighting. Okay, important that you get it on the mark. <laughs> well, yes and no, okay? We do have a little bit of flexibility. Grab a drill. We're gonna need a step drill, which is this. The reason it's called a step drill is because it looks like steps. And it steps up. This one's actually got the top snapped off. So I'll grab another one. We don't wanna mislead anybody, see? Snepo, drilling steel. So don't do that, kids. Okay, so we're just gonna pop some holes in here. I'd normally just have this up this way and be drilling from this side um, because I've got a better control. But if I'm gonna stuff it up, I may as well stuff it up in front of you guys. So not too much pressure because if I push, it'll actually blow the inside out. I'm just putting a pilot hole. So there's no weight. I'm pulling the trigger and letting the cutter cut. Okay, pretty simple. Excuse me while I drill these ones. Okay, change out this bit. Ouch, it was hot. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do. We can either go straight in for the step drill or we can drill up a size. I'm just gonna go straight in. Generally, you, you would drill through a couple of sizes. Cool thing with a step drill is that it actually just keeps on going. It, it sort of smoothly cuts like a curl of butter the timber rather than with a drill bit. A drill bit cuts shavings and it can be quite harsh and it also pulls in really fast. One thing I wanted to check though was what step am I drilling to? The reason it's called a step drill is because this goes up five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 mil. Each step is a different, a different size. On here, I'm looking at eight mil. So that'll be roughly there, I guess, but I'll get close and then I'll just check it. Again, let's flip it up so you can see me stuff it up. Um, no pressure again, just holding it in place. You can see it just steps through the sizes. So the cool thing is if you look on the inside there, it's actually pretty clean, just in here. Whereas if that was a drill bit, it'd be all splintered out. Um, I would actually, this is how I normally would do it. Well, I'd do it on my side, but I'd go that way just to get it started and then I'd drill from the inside out like that. The reason is, is because if you look at the two difference in holes there, if I'm not, not incorrect, that one should be cleaner than this one. And because we're gonna um, have stuff cover the outside, it's just a nicer way to do it. So let's just quickly check. We're close, we're not on the money yet. We're close, actually that one is spot on, that one's great. Other reason I like a step drill is because you can actually modify the, the outside 
without modifying the inside. So you can see that perfect, perfect fitment. Um, and so that one will go straight on there. In fact, let's put it on. Um, normally before I reassemble, I'd buff, give them a bit, not as in buff the shells. I mean, just give them a clean with a nice rag, that kind of stuff, or an ugly rag, whatever you got. Remember, bottom, top, bottom, top, sits in there like that, locates in nice, no tension um, on the inside here. You can see that we've got screws and I've already, hang on, stop the bus. Wrong ones. Da da, big one, big one. They're the ones we need. Back up it under here. Okay. So that one locks up in there. Now I'll show you that little tension method again, just so you know. Where am I? Where am I? Okay, that's that bit. We get a screwdriver. All the wrong screwdrivers. I get little gremlins come into my workshop when I'm not here and they move stuff. And when I think it's there, it's not there. So um, anyway, that's lots of fun. <laughs> so let's just have a look here. I don't know if you can see, we'll work on this one. So I've backed it off a little bit. I often talk about the little spring washer. That's this little tiny one in here. And that a spring washer it goes around, but it overlaps and it's sort of cut on a bias. And as you put pressure, it steps over and holds tension against that. Most drums have them because it stops lugs from buzzing. The reason that when I tighten these up, I don't over tighten is because um, it starts to choke the drum. So what I'm going to do is I'm tightening and hopefully you can see just in here. I'm going to tighten it up so it's firm. That's very firm. That would be choked. I'm going to back it off a, a little. I can already feel the spring and then I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on it. The reason I went firm first is because these haven't been put on a drum before. The rubber gasket might be fouling a little, it might just need a little bit of extra effort. So firm and then I'm backing it off and then I'm using the torque setting in my hand basically to get that where I want it, which is there. Nice. Okay, give me two seconds and we'll nip these ones up. So remember just pilot hole drilling from the outside with the step drill. and then just drill up to, I'm probably going seven on the inside and I'll do eight on the outside. And that allows, remember I said, it doesn't really matter if you're not right on the line. The reason it doesn't matter is with a step drill, you can imagine if you're half a mil out of um, your position, with a step drill going up one step, it actually means you're only half a mil out and it's corrected, it means it fits. So, down to there, down to there. Dun, dun, dun. Also, sometimes, you know, if you guys are doing this at home, you might actually go way through or do something crazy or stupid with it. Hey, you know what? Happens. So, learn from your mistake on somebody else's drums. <laughs> no. Just um, learn, don't do it again. Um, you know, some people try, uh, start out and they try things and it doesn't work. Um, it's better than never starting out at all. Okay, so we just double check that that's gonna fit. Now, it's a little bit firm actually, so it does fit. It's just a little bit firmer than the other one was. Again, the beauty of a step drill is I can just wind that in again. All I'm doing is really just clearing out the hole, snug as a bug in a rug. I'm not sure why that bug would be in a rug, but anyway. Okay, hopefully you can see that locking up there. No, 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 no. Pretty simple. So that's how you actually um, get spacing around drums if you don't have anything at home. Remember, that that's all it was, just a piece of plastic piece of paper, probably not cardboard, probably like a manila folder is kind of paper all you need, just tape it up. Um, in all honesty, I've got, I've actually got laser cut templates 
with all the markings of all the lugs and everything I want it. And it's great. It's really good. It's very fast and it's efficient for making drums that are, you know, as more than just a hobby. But one thing I have noticed is that people tend to do this when they are drilling those. They have a template on the ground. In fact, let me mimic it for you. They have a template on the ground. They use a square. They drop the square on the template and they measure up here and draw lug one, lug two. Now in theory, that's going to be exactly in alignment, but in reality, the circumference of a drum is very different to the right angle point on one side and one face. For example, if I actually did that method and went all the way around, I can guarantee you that this lug position here and this one over here, if I measure around and back, they will be different. So in some ways, I do prefer actually doing a circumference measure and dividing it, but it is quite fiddly. Um, all in all, it really doesn't make much difference, to be honest. As long as your lugs fit, as long as your hoops fit, which happens to be why, <laughs> you will see, look at here on that hoop, look at that hole, and tell me if it's a hole or if it's oval. Actually, you can't talk, so I'll tell you. It's oval, and the reason it's oval is because there are tolerances that are needed in drum making. And when you're using timber, timber actually moves. This drum will expand and contract over its life. A um, little bit less because it's sealed, but it will still expand and contract. So I'm just going to throw this last block in again. You can see, a little bit snug. So step drill. We're just going to go up a fraction. And it looks like it was that bottom one that needed to fraction more. Still a bit tight. So this time, I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm actually going to make it wider. Now, why would I make that wider? Because this will just absolutely drop in and it also has no movement. Um, it fits in there quite nice and snug. Oh. Let's not tell Andy. Um, all in all, that's pretty much it. I am going to throw these hoops on quick. As long as my cameraman's still standing, just going to torque set these back up. Tight, back off, tighten up again. Um, I think it was this one actually. Yep. So we haven't adjusted the depth on this drum at all. We've just put the the little legs on but let's just get some things here what have we got so we're using Evans again for you guys I always like to match badge with with that for one one real vain reason and it's pretty simple same with these kind of logo things here I just keep them all to the front it's that when I'm looking at the drum on, on from the top side on, during playing or whatever, I want to make sure the badge is actually facing out. I like the badges on the drums. I like things looking symmetrical, balanced. I like stuff looking nice from the audience's perspective. So I can actually, I can tell exactly where that is. Now the only exception is sometimes on my toms, I'll actually put the badge where my tom mount is going to go. And Again, I do that because I can see very quickly, I know where the badges are. Um, so we've got, we got a few more videos coming out. Um, keep watching, um, do your thing, make sure you subscribe. Um, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money making these for you guys, and we don't ask for much back at all, really. Just the million dollars a year that we get paid. No, we don't get paid anything. We just do this because we like doing it. Just going to share some information with you. But it would be nice if you, if you can uh, talk to some people, share it around. Hopefully you'll learn something. If it's stuff you already know, that's awesome. You're longer down the journey than I am, so that's great. Um, we've got a couple of tuning ones coming up. Um, also got a couple of videos on um, things like timbers and what, what influence that has on a drum shell. Um, yeah, 
some cool stuff like that. How to set up your drum set. Um, a lot of people who've been playing for a very long time don't actually know how to set up a drum set. So, and I know that sounds odd, but the human body is a machine and the machine has to be calibrated to the components that are around. And just like a, a cog in a machine, if we are that cog, we have to actually adjust the stuff around us so that we are at optimal performance. So that I'm looking forward to doing that one to you because a lot of that's my own information, my own journey that I've been on um, in making drums and playing and building and touring and all that kind of stuff. So I've had to sort of learn and think about things that most drummers um, don't need to because other people tell them what to think and they just believe whatever they've heard. Me, personally, um, I don't like just being told something. I like to challenge the idea first and have a listen, a look and a play or whatever it is. Um, all right, how are my legs there looking? Hopefully they look relatively balanced. Um, it's pretty cool that these old um, Pearl Masters kits have stainless hoops. I mean, that's a lovely feature. Stainless does have a slightly different sound too normal steel so let's get this cranked up i'm using like a speed wrench i don't know why because i don't particularly like them but actually i do know why because i went over to grab a drum key and it was the only one that was sitting left <laughs> so anyway all right so pretty flat one of the things i actually prefer when i'm tuning um, now i'm i can be extremely meticulous at tuning but what I prefer to do is actually put the drum on its legs, um, tune up the bottom head, and then I mess around with the top head until I'm happy with its tension. Um, yeah, but anyway. Bong bong, that's these uh, things here rattling, just so you know. But yeah. There we go, one floor tom. All right, so we finally made it to the end of that uh, Pearl Drum video with all of those different toms. Remember, we cut our toms down. If you haven't seen that, go back and check out part one and two of how to cut down re-ring toms. It's quite an art, and it's got some good skills and tips for you in there. This video that you've just seen was about our floor toms and how to actually fit new legs to um, uh, an old tom that you've got to get it out and about. So anyway, I'm Tony Moore. This is Killer Drums. Check us out. Like, subscribe, and do all those other things. Tell your friends about us. We've got some awesome things coming up. We're about to go back into the studio and do some more filming. Um, that'll be coming up too. Check us out on Instagram, on Facebook, for those who are still on Facebook, and obviously on YouTube. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.